morning, Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Good morning. Good morning. First, we give honor to God, to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Shelby L. Tate, Sr. We are here at Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church in Seattle, Washington, and we are just thankful and blessed to be able to be here for another Resurrection Day. Amen. We call it Easter, but it is the Resurrection Day of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And we all know today is April the 17th, 2022. Amen. May we bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have blessed us to be able to be here once again. You have opened up a way for us, Lord, to be able to give you praise, honor, and glory, which you so richly deserve. We cannot make it, and we have not made it without you, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for seeing this day, which is a special day to us, Lord. And we thank you for coming for us. Heavenly Father, bless me, touch my mouth, my voice, and my mind, and everything that has to do with my bringing this message this morning, which is a Sunday school lesson. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. I am Minister Laverne Phillips Andrews, and I am one of the associates at Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church, Seattle, Washington. And I thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. We're going to get right into our lesson. Those that have it, we will have uh, the subject, which is Resurrection of the King. All right. The scripture lesson that it is found in is Matthew 28, 1 through 10. Those that would like to follow along. That's Matthew 28, 1 through 10. It says in your reading, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and quickly go and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you in Galilee, there shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre, which fear, excuse me, with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus, unto, excuse me, then Jesus said unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. We thank you for the word of, of God. Our key text here says, Then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. We know that our lesson today is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's something that, uh, it's a type of lesson actually to me that I feel that our pastor is more qualified to be able to speak on because it's always good hearing how he brings out certain points on different things, and a lot of things that we may miss along the way. But as I go into the lesson, we know that uh, the, 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 the uh, Mary, Mary Magdalene and the other one, the other Mary, they have they had two Marys, because there was also uh, Mary who was the, the uh, mother of Jesus. But we have these two Mary, Mary Magdalene and then the other Mary, that uh, did go and they saw that uh, they were looking for him because they were going to anoint him with their special ointments and oils, you know, that they had back in the day, uh, his body. And uh, so when they got there, as we see from our lesson, they uh, noticed that uh, they did run into the angel. An angel came to them is what happened. And uh, the angel did say to them, fear ye not, 
for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. That was the angel speaking to them. Well, what was what what really got me was how uh, the, the the individuals, the um, guards that they put there, how they they said that they actually felt like dead men. You know, it's like they 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 didn't realize what had happened, but they had put the, they put those people there so that they could. Uh, keep watch over the area, you know, keep watch over to make sure because they 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 still had it in their minds that uh, Jesus was going to rise. They had heard it, but you know, you know how it is sometimes we can hear things and we may believe it and we may not. It's up to us whether we want to believe something or not. We run through a lot. We have a lot of different things going on in our lives and we can have somebody to come and tell us something. And they may say something to us, and, and we may kind of take it, uh, you know, maybe maybe they're telling the truth and maybe they're not. But in this case, we see that the truth was told. God had already told the truth. The purpose of him sending Jesus was for us. He sent them him down to be able to save us, to save us from our sins. Because had he not came, we wouldn't even be able to stand here today. I don't even believe that we would even be here any any place. I don't think we'd even be on the land of the living or on earth if it was not for Jesus, for him coming and saving us from our sins. Because we know each and every day of our lives, we, we go through different um, aspects and a lot of things that happen in our lives that we, we don't know sometimes whether we're even going to make it or not. Mm -hmm. But God always seems fit to bring us through. Yeah. And so, like I said earlier, this lesson we, we have a little time, but I'm, I'm just going to say what I have to say and get out the way because I, I really um, feel that this is a lesson that um, our our pastor, Reverend Dr. Shelby L. Tate Sr., is the one that can um, expound on it a little more than we can. I'm not trying to get out of doing the lesson, <laughs> just so you all know. But it's a, to me, uh, this particular lesson is, is so important because it's actually what we basically base our lives on mm -hmm. right now. It, 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 uh, at least I do, and I'm sure everybody else does too. Because uh, if God did not send His Son to save us from our sins, where would we be? Yeah. You know, what would we be doing? How, how would we be living our lives had He not came? That's one of the things that I was thinking about last night. Uh, you know, we, we do a lot of things in our life and we go through life, but where would we be had He not sent Him? You know, I think about that. Where would we be? We have no, we have no way of knowing. But for them to go and to find the empty tomb, yeah. you know, and they, they looked at they they saw it. And he wasn't there. Well, you know how it is. People they have their own mind, and so they, I'm sure that at that time, and people that even read the lesson can say, well, you know, maybe they moved him. You know, maybe they took him somewhere else. You know, they f tried to find all kind of reasons. But as we know. He did rise, and nothing stopped him from rising. There wasn't nothing going to happen that was going to stop him from rising. Yeah. And so, for he, and then for them, him to tell Mary Magdalene and Mary to let let the uh, the disciples know. And so, I mean, so they, I mean, but the, the what was good about that? They were so excited, and uh, I mean, and they they knew that it was going to happen, and they believed it. And so they were. That's what made them so excited about going, you know, to and tell and telling the, the disciples about it. So. Um, that's pretty much all that I have to say, Amen. because like I said, this, this particular uh, scripture, this particular lesson that we have today is, um, is for, to me, is for someone that's way more experienced. And if anybody has any questions or has anything that they want to say, then um, certainly do so, because I'm, I am going to be turning it over to the pastor, because I want to hear uh, what he has to say about this lesson, because this is, this is why we live. To me, I, I, I live to be able to serve God. And to do what I can to help others, because that's what we're here for, you know. So that's so that's what I that's my feeling. So, um, uh, Reverend Smith, Mr. Smith, did you have something that you wanted to well, say I, or add to it? I just, well, as you was reading it, something dropped in my spirit. I was mm -hmm. touched on on how the angel came and told the disciples to go and tell Mary and Mary to go and tell the like they were dead. Yes. And I just got to thinking when you got a relationship with Jesus, the Bible says a uh, perfect love cast out all fear. All right, all right. So when you have that relationship, you mm -hmm. don't have to fear.
hear what God is doing. Matter of fact, you look forward mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. what God is doing. It's the, those, it's the ones who don't have a relationship that's right, that's with right. God that fears what he's doing or his coming or his mm -hmm, resurrection mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or him moving in your life. That's right. <clears throat> That just stood out to me is that, you know, when you got that relationship, mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. you don't fear your, 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 you shouldn't fear your natural father. You know? That's right, and that's how right. How much more we, you know, don't feel our natural father, fear our natural father, should we gravitate and, and look forward to our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. So I just, that just mm -hmm. uh, jumped out to me. It speaks to relationship. Yes, it does. When you got that relationship, Mm -hmm. You run to God versus running from God. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. anticipate God versus being fearful of God. So mm -hmm. that just stood out to me. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a real that's a real good point to bring. Yeah, because there are a lot of things that we fear, but that's one thing that uh, we we should know that when we put our trust in God, we don't have to fear anything. Mm -hmm. So as I said. That's, that's pretty much all I have to say, and I really want, would like to turn it over to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Shelby L. Tate, who is the pastor and founder of the Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church here in Seattle, and let him expound on our lesson and do, do the review as he is going to do for me. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Amen. It's taking me a while to put my mask on. <laughs> We're showing sure, it. We're matching up, ain't we? We got a pastor face. He's looking good. We give praises to, to God. We thank God for Jesus. And, and uh, thank God for my wife to the ministers, <clears throat> to all of you, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The resurrection of the king. All right. Notice the lesson says the king, the king. not a king. So it's different than, it's different than the king oh. and a king. <clears throat> a king, uh, the king is the one who has all power. <laughs> that no other power can uh, conquer or compare with the, uh, uh, with, with, the, with the king, okay? So the writer of the commentary is trying to actually point out to us that there is, there is uh, something about the king versus a king, uh, <clears throat> you see, and which means that this king has done more and greater things than any other man any other human being on the face of the earth because he was he was human and God at the same time and that and there isn't too many that can switch from God to man and still yet be able to uh, stay holy and stay perfect and keep a good balance we as individuals we have our balance gets off sometimes because we are not God we are human and so with God everything Everything always stays in balance. So God has to come down himself, uh, representative of him, which is the Son, and, uh, and, uh, and show, uh, what, what show, show the world what a real king is and how a real king operates and what a real king can do. Mm -hmm. So therefore, now, <clears throat> this is why the Bible is so complex, but yet, so simple because the Bible says that a blind man can't err if they read the Bible uh, listen to the words of God be impossible for them to you know to actually to actually err so let's take a look further at the lesson the lesson is one that we have that we have read numerous of times have heard it read heard it preached heard it teach but there's always some uh, uh, new uh, revelation that God gives us gives us when we read the lesson if we read and concentrate and pray about it God will always open up our minds to new revelation that he has hidden in the scripture 
So when you look at this, when you look at that first verse, it says, in the end, in the, in the end of the Sabbath, mm -hmm. which means that the Sabbath had, the Sabbath, most of the Sabbath had passed and come to the end of the Sabbath. Okay, now, uh, why uh, would Matthew uh, put it like that? And why would he write that? It said, as it began, as it begun to dawn towards the first day of the week, comma. Okay, there are two great things there that we can get out of that lesson. Now, anybody know what they, what they are? There are two great things that we can get out of this lesson. In the, in the end, in the end of the Sabbath, come on, as it begun to dawn towards the first day of the week. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you use Sunday for your Sabbath day. Okay, because the Bible didn't say what day it was. He said, as it is it in the end of the Sabbath. Okay, so yes, so so we don't know we don't know what the Sabbath day was at that time. We are going by what what man has interpreted, uh, translated as to be the Sabbath. You won't find nowhere in the Bible where it says what day the Sabbath day is. Okay, Mr. Smith. Well, oh, well, that, that kind of changes things in, in a lot of what you just said. But let me just take a, a, a stab at it anyway. Um, I was just going to say, um, um, a lot of people, um, they, they, they want to say that they, they, it doesn't give any specific date. But, um, but if, it, if Sabbath was on a Saturday and it ended, then Jesus got up Sunday morning, um, which kind of, which kind of speaks to why we worship on Sunday versus Saturday. Yeah, it's, that's, that, that, that's nothing wrong with that. That, that. that has been a, a debate, a challenge since the, uh, uh, since Jesus was, uh, since Jesus rose from the grave. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, if you want to, if you really want to debate it and, and look at it in a sense, now, one thing that we can't, that we cannot do, and that is, argue or debate whether it was a Sunday or whether it was a Monday. Mm -hmm. Because man has taken the first day of the week for what? Monday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Monday is the first day of the week. Okay, he said at the at the uh, at the end of the Sabbath. That's what it says. In the end of the Sabbath. Now if Jesus if, if Sunday if Sunday is this is the first day of the week. Okay. Then uh, Jesus would have to have died on Thursday. Because mm -hmm. the Bible does say he was in the grave for how many days and how many nights? Three days, three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. Which is 24 hours in each day. Which means that if you count back, if, if you count back and find out when did he rise or when did he die? So it'd have to be three days from the day that he died. So if he rose on a Sunday, he would have to have died on Thursday. Yeah. Mm. We should be having this Thursday instead of this night. <laughs> count them. Count them. Thursday night. Let's go, let's go Friday night. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. And so, which means that he would have to have rose on Monday. You got that other, other 12 hours you got to deal with. Now, that's just food for thought. 
is to stimulate your thinking so that we can that we can look at that we can look at what is the Sabbath day for us. Mm -hmm. I teach and I, I teach in, our, in my classes and classes that I've taught over the years that that's a debate, that's a challenge that can hinder salvation if you focus on that. I said, if you focus on that, it can hinder your salvation. I said, now, if, if, if uh, no one knows when actually, actually, what is the Sabbath day, when he died, he just said he died, he, he said he, he, uh, he died, and he got up on the third day morning. Even in the Bible, the Bible doesn't, did that, at that time, didn't have no Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It had, it had, it had their, 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 their Monday, their Sunday. Nobody knows when it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, it didn't come into play until the, the, the day didn't come into play until after you after uh, many many years after Jesus went uh, Jesus rose from the grave and began to, and to keep time and nobody put down there what day it was. Mm -hmm. They didn't put down there it was a uh, Friday when he died. Mm -hmm. You won't uh, uh, if you find Friday in the Bible. If you find Friday in the Bible that he died, let me know. Or if you find Thursday in the Bible that he died, let me know, and I'll start preaching it. <laughs> so, so Good Friday is, you know, they, they, you know, Christians believe that on Good Friday that's when he was crucified. So that's that's pretty much a theory. Then. That's that's the tradition. Tradition, yeah. It's a tradition because back in the South. A lot of the um, lot of the folks wouldn't plant their crop until Good Friday. They'd always plant on Good Friday. That's supposed to be good luck. Anybody who came from the deep south worked on the farm. That was a thing. We didn't plant. We got our crop ready, but we didn't put no seeds in the ground until Good Friday. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> because they consider that they consider that the day that the day that Christ was put was put on the cross and that he died on the cross, they consider that as a good luck charm. Mm -hmm. Like the children of Israel using using the covenant for a good luck charm. Mm -hmm. They say if we got if we got if we have the covenant with us, then God is with us. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that the covenant was nothing but a piece of piece of wood, piece of metal, piece of uh, rock. And they were looking for that rock to that rock to protect them, and not looking to God. And I remember one year we planted our crop. Came a hailstorm. Our crop got up about that high. Came a hailstorm, beat everything right down to a snub. We planted on Good Friday. We had to turn it all over the ground. Turn it all over. Refertilize it and replant it, and pray that it got matured enough to enough to harvest in the late summer and early fall. Mm -hmm. So Daddy said, uh, uh, "So much for that Good Friday. <laughs> We're gonna plant when we get when we get ready." But but what I'm saying is this: is that sometimes uh, superstition and traditions. Can cause us to miss the mark. Uh -huh. Now let's take a look here. It says, it, it says the end of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Now why the end of the Sabbath and just before the break of day that the women went to the tomb? Can everybody tell me? Well, let me go ahead, Brother, Brother, Smith, Brother Smith. Let me and let me let me see what you have to say. According to Jewish custom, the Sabbath was a rest day, so you couldn't do anything according to Jewish custom during the Sabbath. So they sat still. I'm, not, I'm just I'm just speculating. They sat still during the Sabbath until the Sabbath came to an end, and then they went to go see. They probably. Had it on their hearts and on their minds 
but keep up the Jewish customs that you actually do no labor on the Sabbath, that's a rest day, that they, that they just probably just stayed put until the end of the Sabbath, and then went looking to find out about what was on her heart concerning Jesus. I don't know about your speculation, but you read on it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, can't, it can't be any clearer than that. That was the custom. Mm -hmm. And you don't do any work mm -hmm. on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You wait till the Sabbath is over. And that's why they stayed up all night long and waited till the Sabbath was over. Then early in the morning, just at sun up, mm -hmm. they went to the sepulchre mm -hmm. to try to they went there to try to get the guards to let them go in and dress the body with oil and, uh, and, uh, inc and incense and, and, uh, and, and, and the stuff that they, that they put on the body. <clears throat> and so that was, the, that's, that, that was the purpose, is to, get, is to get there right after the Sabbath so they wouldn't be guilty of violating the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. If they was if they were found guilty of violating the Sabbath, they could be put to death. Mm -hmm. You see, so what so there was no game being played back there, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a real thing. And so they waited until uh uh that second paragraph that said as it began it began to dawn toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see this sepulchre. Now, let's go a little further. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angels of the Lord had descended from heaven and came and rolled back the, the stone from the door. And set up on it. Now, while they were, when they was going, they was wondering who gonna move the stone. Mm -hmm. Cause when you put a stone up there over the over the entrance of, of the of the, uh, of the of the cave of the of the, uh, of the tomb, in this particular time, it's sealed with the Roman seal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not only it's not only uh, put up there, rolled up there by a number of men, but they put the Roman seal. And anybody who breaks the Roman seal without the Roman government giving them permission, he was deaf. You see, and so again, there was no plan. And there was no fooling around. Now they were wondering, Who's gonna roll the stone away? <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna roll the stone away? They know they couldn't do it. Okay, one, they was weak. The other thing was, the, no disciple would do it because they don't scatter. Mm. And, then, and then whoever moved it was breaking Roman law. Broken Roman law. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, so, and so now they got a dilemma on their hand. But to their surprise, they didn't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good news? Yeah. They didn't have to deal with it. The disciples didn't have to be put in jeopardy. Yeah. Okay, the only people that could lose their life potential was the guards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. they're responsible. They're responsible. Mm -hmm. You see, and so, that, so and so now the next thing is that it's so it's so it's so unique here is. There was an earthquake, and they didn't know it. And I'm, let me let me use my sanctified imagination. I believe they didn't feel it because not like the earthquake that we we have around here. Earthquake in one place, in one place, and that was what Jesus was at in the tomb. And when the earthquake hit, it just broke the seal and tilted the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that area, I had so much power that the 
stone begin to move. And either way you want to, either way you want to, you want to interpret or calculate it, it was such a force in that area that the stone moved. Because the angel was behind it. And anytime God is behind something, if he makes a promise, the old saying, you can take it to the bank. It's sure, it's for sure. Okay, now, let's move a little further. Now, next thing, notice the next thing it said. The angel not only moved the stone, but sat on the stone and waiting on the women to come. That, that, now, what, what God says, I don't care if it's a Roman seal, if it's a Russian seal, <laughs> whether it's a China seal, I don't care. If I want to move it, I'm going to move it. Then on top of that, I'm going to sit on it to show my displeasure. Hmm. You all know what they used to do with kings? They used to take kings back to their, back to their own, uh, when they captured a king, they would take them back to the, uh, to the country and they would hang them. Mm. Or they would behead them and put their head on the post mm. for everybody to see. That was some cold stuff going on, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, uh, here, here God sent the angel and said, said y'all think y'all got power, I'm going to show y'all some power. I'm gonna y'all can seal it if you want to. I'm gonna remove it, then I'm gonna sit on it for a rest area. Getting God good? Y'all getting some thoughts? Yeah, yeah, very good. I was just thinking like that's that's you know, I, I was just thinking when he rolled the stone back and he broke the seal. It's, it's good to have God do what you struggle with. You yeah. Know, come before you and deal with all the difficulties. Yeah. I'll take the weight of, of it so that you're not in trouble with man or God. You just do what I tell you to do. And I'll deal with all the politics. Yeah. I'll deal with all the, the you know, the, ain't nobody got to go to jail or lose their life. I'm going to deal with it. You just need to. I'll do what you take do when you fall short. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna step in and I'll roll the stone. You physically can't roll the stone. You don't want to be responsible for breaking the seal. All of that don't even don't even lose no sleep or worry about that. I'll deal with that. Yeah. And that's 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 good to know you got a God. It's almost like how um, a hiring and a shepherd. A shepherd goes before the sheep, right. while a hireling goes in back of the sheep and drives them, mm -hmm. while a shepherd goes in front of them because he wants to deal with whatever before it gets to the sheep. And yeah. I, that's just, when you was talking, that's what just deposited in my spirit. Yeah. God will deal with all the issues. Yeah, that's, that's why God says, don't fear what you're going to what you're going to say and what you're going to do when you come before the unjust court. He says, just, let, just go and keep, your, and keep your thoughts on me and your prayers on me and keep your mind on me and I'm going to tell you what to do and what to say when you get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, so this is, this is some, something like that. And so when it comes down to when you, when, when you want to get a, 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 a true understanding of the lesson and some good stuff out of the lesson, it's saying that God is already there before you get there. He's already there and already taking care of the problem. Mm -hmm. And we sweating about it. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, let's, move, let's move a little further. Now, it says, this is the angel. His countenance was like, like lightning. Mm -hmm. His raiment was white as snow, like lightning. Can you look at, can you really look at lightning and see what, what lightning does? Well, you can look at it, but it moves so fast. And it's there and gone. Mm -hmm. 
God said, that's how fast I am. I'm faster than zigzag lightning. I'm powerful than rolling thunder. Nothing can compare with my power. And that's why they use that word lightning. God is God is God God is quick for quick get ready. Okay, now listen to, listen to this brother brother Smith hit on this a moment ago. And for the fear of him, this is this is this is the uh, this is the uh, keeper. For the fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. They just they became dumbfounded, mm -hmm. statue lad. Mm -hmm. Don't know what to do. Can't raise a sword. <laughs> Can't think. Don't know where the power come from. And so they just so they just dumbfounded. Mm -hmm. Have you ever you, you ever been that way? Mm -hmm. yeah. That God has moved so quick and so fast in your life and got things so straightened out and you look back and says, what was I when that happened? <laughs> so when you start studying this lesson just verse by verse, I tell you, you can get some nuggets out of there that will fill your stomach up real quick. I mean your spiritual stomach. Okay, now, a little further, then I'm going to be through. There's no question. Listen what this. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Fear. Now, the women didn't go there. They weren't brave. They, they, weren't, they, weren't, they weren't brave when they went there. Two things that happen when it comes to fear. One, they were afraid that they're not going to get into the get in the tomb. Mm -hmm. Number three, no, number three, number two. They were afraid that they were intruded. They were afraid they're going to be arrested. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the fear, you have to look at all the fears that they face, in, in spite of their bravery. Mm -hmm. And so they also was afraid. Well, the tomb is not going to be open. We're not going to be able to do what we wanted to do. And so, in a sense, unless it's for he is risen, and, and he and he come, he said, and, and and he said, come see the place which the where the Lord laid. Come see the place where the Lord laid. Other words, he said, he said to the angels, that I'm through. I know you're here. He's not here, but his evidence is here. <laughs> his evidence is here. <clears throat> so anytime that you have evidence that you've been in the presence of Jesus, you're doing something. If you got evidence, this is, now listen to what it says. If you got evidence that you've been in the presence of Jesus, you're doing something. Now, evidence is how you live, how you talk, how you worship, how you praise, and how you treat your fellow man, and how you treat your family. How you treat your family. That's evidence. That this man being me is what? That was in Christ Jesus. Any questions, real quick? Though we say we go ten minutes. We have ten minutes. We got almost ten minutes to go. Yes. Well, I, not, not so much a, a, a question, but um, maybe you can expound. Towards the end, when, G, when the angel told Mary Magdalene and, and Mary to go tell the disciples that you know Jesus has risen, a lot of people use that scripture as foundation. <laughs> to say that we commission women to preach that because they were the first ones to preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus that there are resurrection. And so the disciples at that time didn't know 
because they weren't there. They were eyewitnesses because as you said, they're coming into them, look, there's evidence. Mm -hmm. And then they went and told the disciples um, that he has risen. And so I just wanted you to expound a little bit on that. Because um, it was a one, it was a woman, according to this particular scripture, that told the good news first. Right. See, what happened is people misinterpret that scripture. He didn't tell the women to go preach to the disciples. He told them to go tell my disciples to meet me in the appropriate place, in the place where I told them to meet me after my resurrection, before I went, before my resurrection, that I'm gonna meet them there. And so they, what they're doing is going and telling the disciples to meet Jesus at the appropriate place where Jesus had told them to meet him after his resurrection. Not to go preach the gospel. Remind them. Of remind, yeah, to remind them. Now that doesn't say that he didn't call women to preach, but not in that case. But you understand some people use it oh, as a foundation. Oh yeah, they say the first message Jesus got out of when he rode from the grave was to a woman. <laughs> I don't think it's going to affect us as Christians as long as we remember that if, if, we, if we worship on, on Sunday and we take Saturday evening for our, for our first day, beginning of the Sabbath, until sundown on Sunday, that, for the concern, that's the Sabbath. If we take Saturday, uh, 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 Friday, they take Friday to Saturday evening to sundown, and they stick with that, I'm convinced those folks are serving the Sabbath day. If they take Wednesday, and they stay, and, and, they, and that's what they, 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 the church has developed, and they, and they stay with that, and follow that, I'm convinced that God is going to save them. Because what? They, they're, keeping a, they're, keeping a, they're keeping a Sabbath day. And they're resting. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can't, you can't blame, you can't, you can't blame this, this, this particular group because they, theirs is on Saturday and, this, and the others are on Friday and the others are on Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, when they actually start. Because some people try to try to take uh, uh, trick you up with that. We are the only true. We are the only true. Uh, only only true uh, Sabbath day holders. And they can't prove it. And, and I'm still waiting on to prove it. <laughs> Mr. William. Well, the Bible doesn't say. I don't think how many uh, that I can admirate it. How many, how many guards they had there. But uh, I was. This is my own. Don't don't. There's no biblical on this. This is me. I'm convinced they had uh, at least four. Okay, one on each side of the tomb, which is normal. Okay, and one and one also as a watch out, as a lookout. That's just me. Ain't no biblical behind that. 